Thanks, Renette. Now I'm Randy Hansen in World News Headlines today. Repeal of Ohio anti-union law tops election day results in IAEA questions Iranian nuclear program. And U.S. officials says IAEA report may not contradict view Iran has abandoned nuclear weapons. And Syrian government attacks continue in Homs as death toll passes 3,500. And Obama administration expands drilling in Gulf of Mexico and Alaska and occupy protesters to march from Wall Street to D.C. And folk duo Cosby and Nash performs at the OWS, and Gitmo prisoner appears for first military trial under Obama. And Nashiri's attorney denounces the military trial as a sham, and Italian Prime Minister Berlusconi announces resignation. And Obama touts education reforms in Philadelphia. And thousands of Haitian cholera victims sue United Nations. And Jimmy Carter says Haitians should be allowed to rebuild without foreign interference. But before these stories, GVTV News, I'd like to thank one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. In today's first world news story, advocates for labor, women's, and immigration rights are celebrating a number of key victories in Tuesday's state elections in Ohio. Voters defeated Republican Governor John Kasich's controversial limits on collective bargaining rights of state employees. Issue came to a vote after a group collected 1.3 million signatures to be placed it on the ballot. Meanwhile, an Arizona architect for the state's controversial anti-immigration law has lost his state Senate seat in an unprecedented recall vote. Russell Pierce wrote Senate Bill 1070, which forces police to investigate the immigration status of people they have lawfully detained. In Mississippi, voters have rejected a far-reaching and stringent anti-abortion initiative known as per personhood amendment that would have conferred rights on an embryo from the moment of conception. Meanwhile, in Maine, voters have defeated a Republican measure that barred same-day voter registration on Election Day. The UNA International Atomic Energy Agency has raised new concerns over what is called possible military dimensions to Iran's nuclear activities. In a leaked report, the IAEA said credible evidence indicates that Iran has carried out activities relevant to the development of nuclear explosive device. IAEA report comes amidst widespread speculation the Israeli government is geared up for an attack on Iran. Iranian ambassador to the IAEA condemned the report's findings. Ali Ashkar Sultani said this report is unbalanced, unprofessional, and prepared with a political motivation and under political pressure, mostly by the United States. This is a pity that this report has diverted from normal practices, has IAEA found. After 4,000 inspections, mandate inspectors, even one gram of material diverted to military purposes, have the agency found any smoking gun? Therefore, it seems that we are seeing the same scenario of the Bush administration once again, but performed by the Director General of the IAEA. This is very dangerous game. 
although the iran is expected to face calls for new sanctions u s officials have already suggested the report may not contradict previous u s intelligence estimates that found iran has halted its nuclear weapons program speaking to the national journal senior administration officials said the i a e a does not assert that iran has resumed a full scale nuclear weapons program in washington u s department uh, State Department spokesperson Victoria Newland said the United States will review the report before potentially seeking new sanctions. And she said the IAEA director, Yukiya Amano, has now put out his report in classified version to member states. I understand it is now leaked and that we're still considering this a classified document. We will still need time to study it. The Syrian government continues its assault on the city of Homs in an effort to retake the key center of opposition to the regime of President Bashir al-Assad. The attacks on Homs came less than a week after Assad accepted an Arab League peace plan to stop the violence. Syrian opposition leaders are meeting with the Arab League in Cairo. Speaking in Geneva, a spokesperson for the Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights said the United States or United Nations New estimate of 3,500 deaths in the Syrian popular uprising is a conservative figure. It said the brutal crackdown on dissent in Syria has so far claimed the lives of more than 3,500 Syrians. More than 60 people are reported to have been killed by military and security forces since Syria signed the peace plan sponsored by the League of Arab States, including at least 19 on Aid al-Adha on Sunday. You will find our estimates of the death toll is relative conservative compared to what others are saying, and this is because we rely on cor corroborated information from credible sources on the ground inside and outside Syria. The Obama administration has announced plans to expand offshore oil drilling operations in the Gulf of Mexico and Alaska while barring further projects on the east and west coast. The new ruling calls for further drilling in areas of the Gulf of Mexico that are now under development, including some near Florida that have been off limits. Areas along the north slope of Alaska and near the state's southern shore will also be opened up for increased drilling. Meanwhile, the government is withdrawing all of the eastern seaboard from leasing consideration. Environmental groups say the expanded development puts sensitive coastlines, waters, and fisheries at risk in Alaska and in the Gulf. In a statement, the Center of Biological Diversity said ramping up offshore drilling raises the risk of disastrous spills, puts wildlife in harm's way, and deepens U.S. dependence on the fossil fuels driving the global climate crisis. Occupy Wall Street protesters are embarking on two-week walk from New York City to Washington, D.C., inspired by the marches of the Civil Rights Movement. The demonstrators plan to march 20 miles a day, stop at a number of occupations, including Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, and Newark, New Jersey. The 300-mile march will conclude on November 23rd with a protest at the White House against tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans. Protesters remaining in New York City have purchased dozens of military-grade camping tents in preparation for cold winter months ahead. On Tuesday in New York City, occupation played host to 1960s musical icons David Crosby and Graham Nash. Duo played four songs for a packed crowd gathering at Zuccotti Park. A prisoner jailed by n for nearly a decade at U.S. military base at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, is appearing before a military tribunal on charges of orchestrating the deadliest attack on the USS Cole. Abd al-Nashiri is accused of overseeing the planning of the October 2000 bombing, which killed 17 sailors and wounded 40 others. Nashiri's case will mark the first death penalty war crimes trial at Guantanamo under President Obama. Military tribunal was initially canceled in 2009 as part of Obama's pledge to close the prison, but trials have resumed after Obama reversed his position earlier this year. Nashiri has claimed that he confessed to the coal bombing after undergoing repeated torture in U.S. custody. He was waterboarded dozens of times. On Tuesday, Richard Kamen said it had been publicly reported, of course, that Mr. al-Nashiri was in CIA custody and was tortured. And so one of the very powerful arguments that we intend to make at every stage of the proceeding is that by torturing Mr. Nashiri, the United States has really lost all moral authority to try and kill him. It's going to look like a court, but it's not a real court. There is nothing about that that is fair and legitimate. 
This is a court organized to convict. It is a court organized to kill. That was his attorney. Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has confirmed he will step down following widespread pressure over Italy's economic crisis. Berlusconi says he will resign after implementing economic reforms demanded by the European Union. With the third biggest economy in the Eurozone, the economic crisis facing Italy is considered to be far more dangerous than what it, that in Greece. James Walston, a professor at the American University in Rome, said Berlusconi had lost the support of his closest allies. James Walston said even his closest advisors have realized that Berlusconi has lost his magic. The sort of problems that which Italy is facing are ones which Berlusconi is both unwilling and incapable of dealing with. And they, from close advisors and collaborators like Under Secretary Gianni Letta and Secretary General of the People of Freedom Party, Algenlino Alfano, and all sorts of backbenchers have decided they do not want to be part of the government which causes major problems and possibly catastrophic problems for Italy and for the European Union. President Obama made a trip to battleground state of Pennsylvania on Tuesday to unveil his initiatives on early childhood education. Speaking in Philadelphia, Obama announced that education centers preparing children for kindergarten under Head Start will receive further evaluations in order to receive federal funding. Obama also blasted Republicans for opposing his education policies. And he said, the Republicans in Washington have been trying to gut our investments in education early this year. Nearly every Republican in the House voted for a budget that would have cut hundreds of thousands of children from Head Start. They tried to cut Pell Grants for college students. They just voted against jobs bill that would have put 400,000 teachers back in the classroom. Their argument is that we don't have the money. And what I've said is we can make these investments in our children without adding to the deficit simply by asking people who make more than a million dollars a year to pay a little more taxes. Not right now, but starting in 2013. Attorneys for thousands of Haitian cholera victims have announced a lawsuit against the United Nations for bringing the disease to Haiti and then failing to contain it. Some 450,000 Haitians have been sickened and more than 6,000 have died since cholera outbreak erupted in October 2010. Cholera epidemic is believed to have originated with the battalion of Nepalese troops with the UN peacekeeping mission. Attorney Brian Concanon announced the lawsuit Tuesday. Brian Concanon said, the UN put out a report in May that demonstrated the UN was at fault for the introduction and the spread of cholera. Although the report was a conclusion that's disjointed from the facts that, that, that are in that, and the UN is failing to officially acknowledge responsibility, nor is it responding as if responding adequately to slow down and the epidemic and treat the victims. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter continues to visit in Haiti, seeking a greater rebuilding effort for those made homeless by the January 2010 earthquake. Carter called on foreign governments to end interference in Haiti's reconstruction. And he said, my own hope is to build homes here for the poor folks and also to have or to take home 500 ambassadors who will be promoting the importance for the world, helping Haiti with their own elected government. I hope with minimum outside interference in the decision made by the leaders that you all have elected. And that's it for World News Today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. You guessed it, it's us. GV TV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons, and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley, 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. Something happening here But what it is ain't exactly clear 
There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware that's right, it's time for the police blotter. Pictures in the blotter are not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. Grass Valley Police Department on Monday, 8.21 a.m. Caller from 300 block of West Main Street reported someone hit their vehicle overnight. 9.37 a.m. A caller from Butler and Minnie Streets reported people going through charity items. 11.14 a.m. Caller from 200 block of Sierra College Drive reported two juveniles shoplifting. No charges were desired. They were taken back to school. 11.59 a.m., caller from 200 block of Dorsky Drive reported a baby locked in a vehicle. And 1.03 p.m., a caller from 700 block of Annex Avenue reported recent neighborhood thefts. And 1.43 p.m., caller from 200 block of Sierra Drive, College Drive reported a man shoplifting who was arrested on a local warrant. At 2.14 p.m., a caller from East Main Street and Dorsey Drive reported a large oil spill. At 4.31 p.m., a caller from 200 block of Sutton Way reported three girls screaming, cussing, and smoking marijuana. No marijuana was found, and they were advised to keep the noise down. 8.56 p.m., a caller from 1400 block of Sedgeworth Way reported theft of medications. And Nevada County Sheriff's Office on a Monday. 8.35 a.m. Caller from Janaski and Willow Valley Roads reported hearing four gunshots. At 8.53 a.m., a woman from 11,000 block of Blue, Big Blue Road reported her credit card was com compromised. 9.42 a.m., a caller from 17,000 block of Indian Springs Road reported a bear issue. And 10.23 a.m., a caller from 14,000 block of Tao Lee Lane reported a burglary to a residence with silverware and jewelry taken. 12.39 p.m., caller from Rough and Ready and Highway, from the highway, reported vandalism. 1.39 p.m., a woman from Torrey Pines Drive reported her husband yells at her, threatens to put her in a home, and takes her walker away. She called back to report he refused to take her to the eye doctor. Adult Protective Services was called. At 8.51 p.m., a man from 18,000 block of Oak Flat Lane reported mountain lion that had killed a number of his chickens. At 6.05 p.m., a caller from McCourtney Road and Allison Ranch Road reported a man yelling at traffic who was arrested on suspicion of being drunk in public. At 7.50 p.m., a caller from 22,000 block of Keller Road reported theft of a generator over the weekend. At 9.01 p.m., an uncooperative patient at the hospital reported an assault in Penn Valley. And that's it for the blotter today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. Yes, it's us. GB TV News. In today's local news headlines, proposed pot ordinance draws hot debate, and Zanola Young sentenced to six months. Nevada City faced with opposition to behavior ordinance. In our first local story written by Liz Keller of the Union, a proposed county ordinance to regulate marijuana cultivation drew a standing room only audience to the Board of Supervisors meeting Tuesday afternoon. The push for such an ordinance stems from a large marijuana garden on an Annie Drive vacant lot in Alta Sierra, which sparked the formation of Nevada County Against Residential Cannabis Cultivation, the NCARCC. The group 
has advocated for the ordinance and was in very visible attendance Tuesday. Sample ordinance was brought to the board by Sheriff Keith Roll. Although the agenda item was for discussion only, public comment was allowed due to the high level of interest. Roll emphasized the ordinance, which could limit the number of plants depending on zoning, as well as grows within 1,000 feet of areas where children gather, is only a template. We're not here to take away a person's right to, to medical marijuana, Roll said. We're just trying to get a handle on it. More than two dozen people spoke Tuesday, seemingly evenly split between those supporting the ordinance, a bet with some concerns, and those who felt it would unfairly penalize legitimate small growers. Those in favor shared concerns with noise, traffic, crime, and odor, as well as harm to property values. Why can't I be on certain parts of my own property during the growing season, asked Maureen Detoy who said the smell of marijuana causes her allergies to flare up. Where are my rights? I'd just like to get my neighborhood back, said Frank Jackson, who advocated for a more restrictive ordinance. Several growers and medical marijuana patients spoke, telling supervisors they obeyed the law and argued the proposed ordinance would be unduly restrictive. The ordinance is very draconian, said Robert Stauber, Disabled since birth, it throws the baby out with the bathwater, and I'm one of the babies. This would do nothing to curb large commercial growth, said Jebediah Biaga, or Biaga, or Biagi, I don't know. So what's the point? It would only make it more difficult and expensive for legitimate patients to obtain their medicine. Several in the audience brought up the economic impact of restricting marijuana growth, which Nevada City Council member Renette Sinem called the elephant in the room. A lot of business owners have come to me telling me this crop is keeping us afloat right now, Senum said, proposing an economic impact study. The supervisors put the ball back in Royal's court, telling him to move forward with a draft ordinance. Royal indicated the process could take as long as four months and said he would reach out to the various special interest groups. We're looking for a middle ground, he said. Well. We just think they should just legalize it, tax it, put it right next to the liquor cabinet. And another Liz Keller story, Grass Valley man who tried to intimidate his girlfriend by firing shots into the air was sentenced to five months in county jail, plus an additional 30 days for a prior case in Nevada County Superior Court Tuesday. James Gerald Zanola Young, 19, was arrested after Grass Valley police officers were called to the 200 block of Dorsey Drive at about 4.20 a.m. September 16th after multiple callers reported hearing shots fired. Zanola Young was found with a loaded handgun and a sawed-off shotgun. He allegedly had been involved in a domestic dispute with his pregnant girlfriend and was across the street from her apartment taking or t talking or texting on her phone on that he was going to kill her and firing into the air. Sonola Young pleaded no contest to the felony discharge of the firearm, a misdemeanor count of criminal threats, and a misdemeanor count of possession of brass knuckles in an earlier case. Nevada County Deputy District Attorney Oliver Pong alluded to Zanola Young's extensive juvenile criminal history as he urged Judge Candace Heidelberger to consider a stiffer sentence. This continuing pattern of misconduct is going to land him in prison for life in installments, Pong said, adding that Zanola Young's professions of remorse rang hollow. Defense attorney Stephen Munkelt, however, pointed to his client's youth and dysfunctional home life, telling Heidelberger that Zanola Young was committed to getting a job and staying off drugs. Heidelberger sentenced Zanola Young to 180 days total with 109 days credit plus five years of supervised probation. Additional terms have concluded no controlled substance without a prescription and participation, participation in anger management counseling. I hope you're serious about turning it around, she said. Well, so are we. Good luck. In a story written by Christopher Rosacker of the Union, little more than two months since Nevada City Council approved an ordinance to regulate public behavior, Tonight, its members will be forced to take up an issue again. Well, this was actually a couple nights ago. Had a little glitch yesterday, so we doubled our news. Faced with the petition against the ordinance signed by 14% of the city's registered voters, council members must either repeal the ordinance at its meetings or put the ordinance up for voter approval as a referendum on the next election ballot in June. 
Stephen Greenberg, a Nevada city attorney, spearheaded the petition against the ordinance, which proponents say will ensure safety on city sidewalks and parking lots. Greenberg also fought Nevada City's previous attempt to curb loitering in the downtown area in 1997, when the council passed a similar measure, which was contested and eventually overturned by voters. Nevada City's most recent attempt is carefully described as a public behavior ordinance, not anti-loitering. It gives law enforcement the authority to cite anyone after one warning to move along from a municipal parking lot or to cease blocking the pedestrian flow of a public sidewalk. City Council meeting be began at 6.30 p.m. at Nevada City Council the other night. Council members also were asked to accept and file a second follow-up report from Fire Chief Sam Goodspeed regarding gas leak incident two months ago, and review an update report on city strategic planning and review fourth quarter financials. And that's it today for our local news. GVTV News would like to thank Associated Press, Reuters, Amy Goodman, the Union, and others for the sourcing of our news, and especially you for watching. Don't forget, we broadcast three times a day on public access, NCTV, Comcast, Cable Channel 11, and Sudden Link Channel 16 in Truckee and Alta Sierra, 8 a.m., 3 p.m., 7.30 p.m., Monday to Friday, and random other times. Check the website and the schedule. We are streamed daily at NevadaCountyTV.org video on demand there and also we have gvtv.org and our new site which right now is livestream.com slash gvtv where we have 24 7 television on the internet so check it out we also post to facebook youtube blip.tv free video podcasts and itunes you can get us on smartphone psp mini handheld devices and we have rss feed and now we'd like to thank one more underwriter who supports your only visual video news in nevada county that's right it's us gvtv news Boy, do they make good hamburgers. Christopher's Old World Deli and Catering Company has brought its delicious food and service downtown Grass Valley. Do you like desserts? They got them. You like international style lunches? They got them. Christopher's Deli and catering for parties, get-togethers, weddings, or whatever. Open seven 